might be of some help. He might be able to throw us a lifeline. Tim Foreman is the former chief scientist at the UN Environment Programme, and more importantly, for this purpose, the man behind Google Earth. So he knows what the top of your house looks like. Tim Foreman. Good afternoon. Seeing is believing. And seeing the shared reality is essential to our common values for the planet. Seeing eye to eye on the harsh realities, on the ugly, on the bad behaviors, affects what we're giving our children. We have enough information at this point, so we need to visualize and think about this pivotal moment. As Jeffrey Sachs told us this morning, 2015 is our best chance. I, too, was at the 2002 summit, and I delivered the report card of the planet to 192 nations. It was very poor grades. In Rio, 10 years later, the grades went precipitously down. So we've got to look at the adults in the room and ask who's responsible for this? It's a sobering question. Children, however, have a different view, a view, a view of hope, the energy, the climate, the environment. And so we should share that visualization and simply see the complex so we can talk about the science-based understanding. We should simply see the solutions so we can talk about the options of policies and actions. And we should simply share the vision through type two partnerships. Visualize and light up the brain. Light up the brain for innovation. Kofi Annan gave us a model, type two partnerships. Those four sectors pull the cart of sustainable development, all four. They also introduced technology that was keyhole technology back in 2002, a way of zooming around the planet that you now take for granted. You take for granted because it's Google Earth. And it's everywhere. And so you know how to look at India, and you know how to zoom in and search around the continent, and search around the city, find out where you are, and even find out that we share a common view of where we are here. It's that common view that's important. So let us visualize from that perspective and see the complex in climate change. We recognize that it is too complex for any one individual to understand. But by using technologies, we can begin to break down the thing of energy being used in India. What's being used in New Delhi at night? How much energy is in this city? How much energy is being used across Europe and the, and the continents? Because we have learned that there's a connection between that energy and the CO2 in the air. The Keeling curve is one that we all should be talking about. And we know that that increase in CO2 is causing disruptions in the climate, disruptions in the weather. It's causing the poles to warm up quicker. And as they warm up, the ice melts. And the oceans are doing what? The sea level is rising. And the IPCC provides a variety of models, scientific models, none of which are good for our neighbors and people living in low-lying areas. So we had a shared view of the planet from the Apollo astronauts. We need to grab that again and think about the environmental issues and recognize the interactions between all of these different components, because they're all interrelated. And we've discovered that development, environment, sustainability do address policy. The complexities of the economy, well, the truth is it's magic. And it's very complex. And uh, our friend Michael Porter at Harvard recently said the books have to be rewritten because they're wrong. So I'm saying that you can make a fortune saving the planet. You can make a fortune saving the planet. Let every MBA know that as a new truth for our world. Is this too much to handle in our minds? Probably. Probably we're overwhelmed by a lot of things. But if we grab the right technologies, the right technologies and focus on visualizing and focus on the top issues, much like Al Gore gave us the Digital Earth, Conf the Digital Earth vision, and the technology that led into Google Earth, now we can look at our global commons. This is where we all live. And from any place on the planet, I can look at any place on the planet using my phone. So we can look at cities like Las Vegas grow exponentially. We can look at the Amazon forests get deforested exponentially. 
These are the realities that we need to face. Okay, one back. In Brisbane, we held the G20 conference, and it was centered at the Queensland University of Technology, where I am, in terms of the visualization. So we showed the world's leaders what we could do with visualization. We had some honored guests who were wowed by what we had to share with them. The idea that we can look at any issue around the planet and begin to articulate the impacts and the interactions. What's trade versus environment? What's construction versus resource extraction? How is tourism impacted by a positive green area? These are very, very powerful, and they translate immediately to children. Children get it. A picture is worth a thousand words, and we do want to think about the children. Other people think it's important because we're handing them this planet. Will this translate to the social values of the community? Will it? Absolutely, because the people are already plugged in, both ends of the spectrum. The wisdom of the crowds hasn't been tapped. We're still there. The power of leveraging the population via this is phenomenal. So any of our young friends should recognize this is the floodgate to success. Because we can start talking about the interconnections. Lifestyle behaviors by 7.2 billion people are the issue. Let's start waking that up. And let's start connecting with each other in the region, in the country, and around the globe. The citizens out there are our army of scientists. They collect data. We've got new tools that make them supermen. So use these new tools, tap into the local energy of citizens that can be scientists with real data on air quality, water quality. And as we go into that, even in places like Brazil, where the Surrey Tribe has mastered Google Earth technology to be command their area. So reprogram the brain. Let's think on the shoulders of the giants. And as we forge to smart cities, let's get real creative about that. We're standing and looking into the future, a pathway we can build villages and cities that are green, green, clean, and safe. So let's capture the visualization technology so we can enjoy our relationships as we watch the clock go by, soaring to heights in the future, investing in Africa's resources, investing in South America's resources, investing in India's resources as we all should. So join in transforming the world. Let's visualize sustainability. And in the spirit of cooperation, I thank you.